everybody, what is up? My name is Chinasaur, and welcome to a very, very special video of Fallout 3 New Vegas and Fallout 3 unboxing video. So, I recently picked up uh, some of the old collector editions on eBay. We have the Fallout New Vegas collector edition here. We have some extra pop toys I got from GameStop. I'll go over those later. And we have the Fallout 3 collector edition right here. I paid $30 for this on eBay. Normally, they go for like 60 or 80 bucks or higher. Fallout fans are crazy. They charge the hell out of you. I got a good deal on that. My barter skills were on points. And I had paid about $65 for the New Vegas one. That normally goes for about $100 plus. I'm so glad I got some good deals on those items. We're gonna be doing a little unboxing video today. Let's go ahead and start off with Fallout New Vegas. We're gonna go over all the collector editions and I'm gonna show you everything that came in here. Fallout New Vegas came out 2010 or 11. I don't remember the exact year. I started playing Fallout New Vegas around Christmas time in 2011. Pretty sure it came out in 2010. I really, I really should have Googled that before I started recording this video. I actually started off with Fallout New Vegas and then went to th three a uh, year later. Fallout New Vegas is probably my favorite one out of the whole franchise. I just love Fallout New Vegas so much. There's so many cool things you can do in here. This comic right here is called Fallout New Vegas. Uh, it's titled All Roads and it was published by Dark Horse Books and I don't think it's gonna focus in. Kitty, stop meowing. It's not gonna focus in, I'm sorry. I actually read this this morning. It pretty much goes over the backstory of Benny and how he had planned his evil plot to pretty much kidnap the courier, which is who you play as. This is like a prequel to New Vegas, so it actually does tie in with the storyline. Let's read the introduction on page one. In the aftermath of a nuclear war, humanity has trickled to survive. In the Mojave Wasteland, great tribes have taken on the trappings of civilization, building communities, towns, and even cities, but the more brutal instincts aren't as easily left behind. Like I said, this is basically a prequel to New Vegas. It just talks about Benny and the backstory of him before New Vegas started. He's like plotting to kidnap the courier and steal the platinum chip and he gets a hold of the great cons. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's about 30 five pages long I think. The last page is my favorite one. I don't think I'll be able to get it close because I have the camera on the tripod. Benny is just saying, watch the road. He, it shouldn't be long now. This is where they ambush the courier with the great cons. They're like waiting on the road. It says to be continued, fall at New Vegas. It's a great read if you ever do manage to get this in person. It is expensive though. Um, people charge like 30, 40 bucks just for the comic alone, not in the collector edition. Let's take a look at what else you got in the box. There's a little Volt Boy uh, throwing the dice, bedding some chips right there. This is the making of Fallout New Vegas. It's a little DVD. I watched it. It's about 35 minutes long, maybe 40. It's funny because this says not for resale and people still resold it on eBay. I mean, you can probably buy this for about $10 on eBay if you don't want the whole collection edition. I did enjoy it. It's basically the whole game developers explaining their journey of uh, making the game, all the challenges they tackled and all the good memories they had. It's like a little short movie. I, I, I would recommend it if you can get your hands on this. Next we have in the box is the platinum chip. This is from the Lucky 38. It's like a chip, but it's made of metal. On the back, it says 200 on the house. So it's like a little roulette table right there. It's pretty cool. So the next thing in our box is some poker chips. Now these are specific to each casino that are in the game. This is the first chip in the set. This is from the Tama Grangler. The Tama Grangler is in uh, Freeside. This is what the back looks like. It's worth 10 bottle caps. I'm pretty sure that's what the number means. Silver Rush is it's not really a casino, but there's a family that sells a lot of laser guns, plasma guns, so they deal with a lot of um, high-end tech weapons, which are really expensive, but I actually just wiped them out and killed everyone, stole the weapons for myself. Pretty nice place to buy weapons. This is the chip from Gamora. It's across the street from, I think, the Lucky 38. This chip's worth 50 caps. Next one we have is from the Ultra Lux. I love the gold the gold crowns on the edges. Ultra Lux is home to the White Glove Society and they're a bunch of freaks. Not to spoil the game, but New Vegas has been out for, I think, five years now. The White Glove Society eats people and uh, I had murdered, I think, every single one of the White Glove Society and their leader. This is probably one of my favorite ones. So this chip is from the tops. This casino was controlled by Benny, who was the person who had kidnapped the courier and stole the platinum chip and tried to kill you by shooting you in the head. But you came back alive in my playthrough. I had shot Benny in the head and blew him up with a rocket launcher to finish him off. Uh, so this chip is worth five caps. This casino is located 
in Prim, but it's called Bison Steve. It's a reference to Buffalo Bills. If you've ever been to Vegas before, right before we get to Nevada, uh, when, when you're on the strip, the very edge of the border, you have a place called Prim, and you have Whiskey Pete's, Prima Donna, and Buffalo Bills, and this casino in that same location was the exact reference to the real place. The last chip we have here is from Bolt 21. This is a poker chip, and it's only worth $1. Uh, Bolt 21 is in the back, like very, very back of New Vegas. It's right next to the NCR camp. Bolt 21 is like a little hotel. We have seven chips in this collection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The last thing in our New Vegas collection edition is caravan cards. Now, a caravan is really, really complicated. I'm trying my best to learn it, but it does take a while. It's not your average card game. They're normal playing cards. You can play blackjack or poker or whatever. I love these cards because they're all different. They're not just one set. One card is from the tops. The next one is from the Ultra Lux. The third one is from the Atomic Wrangler. Silver Rush. Uh, Bolt 21 and Lucky 38. In total, there's six different casinos in this whole deck. They're all scattered, uh, so you're not gonna have um, one same suite. I mean, they're all, all the cards are gonna look different. But here are the two special cards. We have the Jokers. We have the Courier card. Enjoy your stay. And then we have the Benny card. He's also the Joker. Real shame you got caught up in this kid. And this is like the instructions on the back, but who the hell reads instructions these days? There's the Caravan card, building decks, rules. That is everything in our collector edition. We don't get the game because that wasn't included, but I already have it on Steam, so there's no point of buying the game again. Let's go ahead and grab the Fallout 3 collector edition. And let's get unboxing this thing. Come to Daddy. Just a little further. Come to Daddy. You can do it. There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Let's take the seal off. This, um, this is actually pretty hard to find. Normally, when, when you buy collector editions on eBay, the seal never comes on it. And this is always the missing piece, and it's kind of worth a lot. Uh, to collectors. So let's go ahead and take this off. But let me show you the back end of this first before we get dig into this lunchbox. We get the Vault Boy bobblehead, which are really, really rare to find and they're expensive. Just for one, you gotta pay $50 on eBay or Amazon. These are really hard to find and they're highly sought out for and super valuable. We have the Vault Tech lunchbox here. We have a holotape right here. This is the making of Fallout 3. And we have an art book right there. Let's uh, start unboxing this thing. So let's take a look at the lunchbox. This is probably one of my favorite items in my collection besides the Lucky 38 chip. Prepare for the future, Vault Tech. So then there's a little Vault Boy with the classic thumbs up. I can't imagine how much money Vault Boy has made. And here's the back end of it. It actually looks really, really similar to Fallout Shelter now that I think about it. But in Fallout Shelter, instead of real people, it has uh, Vault Dwellers. And we have the classic pose of Vault Boy right here. If you take a look at the side, we have different um, skills Vault Boy uses to all throughout the games. We have three skills right here. We have Charismatic, we have Endurance, we have a perception. Perception allows you to hear stuff from a distance and allows you to uh, see stuff on your mini map if they're really far away. We have luck. We have agility, which is probably my favorite. And we have intelligence on the bottom. And we flip it around, we get some more. They're just duplicates. Um, I've already said that. That's charismatic. That's endurance. That's perception. And this one's strength. One of my other favorite ones is little Volt Boy. Those muscles, though. Those muscles. Enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and open this up. Flip it around. And let's open the vault. Da, 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 da. Bam! Oh, it's Vault Boy! This is the Vault Boy bobblehead. He's exactly five inches tall. Let's go ahead and take him out. And this is also hard to find in a collector edition that are used. The plastic, I'm gonna move him out of the way. The plastic is always missing from every damn thing. This is like always the hardest part to find. Just this plastic alone is probably worth 10 bucks as people need that to complete their sets. This is just like a normal lunchbox. It is hollow. I wouldn't recommend using it to take it to school because people will jack you for this shit because it's worth a lot of money. Would not take it to school, but keep it at your house for safekeeping. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the bobblehead. This bobblehead's from Bolt Tech. It's a little Volt Boy doing the classic pose, crossing his arms. This Volt Boy has a classic Bolt Suit 101. Uh, 101 is the starting location, Fallout 3, where you start off as a little baby. As time goes on, you grow up and you become an adult, and then he just leaves. And you have to go track him down and find him. The detail on this is pretty cool. I love it. Just the smiley face is so damn adorable. Shh. I will be collecting the rest of these. I gotta spend like 30, 40 bucks per bobblehead. There is a set of seven of them, and there's two series. Series one are really fucking expensive, and guys charge five or six hundred dollars for a complete set. The series two are a little bit cheaper, and still gotta pay a pretty penny to collect each individual one. Yeah, that's gonna take me a while to collect all those. So let's go ahead and put them aside. Let's take a look at the holo tape. If you're not familiar with Fallout, holo tapes are like these audio recording things you find in the game. When you do find the holo tapes, they're located in your pit boy. You just gotta load them up and uh, play the audio message. There's a lot of detail on here. Just for a little CD. Here is what the CD looks like. It's just a normal DVD, but the, the front of it's awesome. Vault 101 Archive Room. The making of Fallout 3. You can probably pick this up for about 5 or 10 bucks on eBay if you just want the CD itself. So let's go ahead and put the holotape away. Here is the classic art book of Fallout 3. There's the ruins of Washington, D.C. I don't know what's going to focus in. There it goes. Vault 101 Archive Room. This is a hard copy. Let's take a look at some of the artwork. Uh, I know I'm running late on this video. I gotta cut this down a lot. I've been talking too much. The art of Fallout 3. Let's briefly take a look at the book. There's the introduction. There's the ruins of DC right there. DC's been through a lot of shit. Fallout 3. Oh god. I wonder if they have any like raider art. Oh yeah, they're the raiders. Okay, so here are the raiders. These are like the bad guys that are always coming after you. We have the Enclave. They're a bunch of dicks. So kind of look like aliens with their stupid armor. Oh man. We have those stupid flies. They're gross. We have the rat scorpions right there. We have the Brahmin uh, cows that are like mutated. They have like two heads. There's a bunch of the robots right there. Oh, those centaurs are gross. I fucking hate them, man. They're like the ugliest thing in the goddamn game. Murlurks there. We have those stupid crab people. Crab people. Crab people. We have some ghouls. Really, really gross. These are some super mutants. I think we're gonna stop going through the art book because we've gone through a lot of pages already. There's a lot of stuff to go through. But yeah, that's pretty much my whole collection of editions. Uh, I wanted to show you guys the Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I want to show you my pop toys I picked up from GameStop. These are hard to come by, especially that Volt Boy guy on top. I know I've gone talking for so long, but this is really important to me. This Volt Boy right here is highly s sought after, and he's really hard to find at any GameStop. I actually tried to buy him again on GameStop, and it says he wasn't located in as like a 60 mile radius from here, so he is really, really hard to find. This is not even the rare one. There's actually a rare one from Hot Topic. There's the Glow in the Dark Volt Boy. I got this pin from E3. Uh, the pin right there. I actually opened it. Well, there's not really there's they don't put tape on the edges of these damn things So you'll you'll never know but I clipped the pin inside the box because I felt like I had to the next pop toy I got is the Lone Wanderer. I only paid ten dollars for her luckily She was not sold out at uh, GameStop or something. I don't have to pay over sticker price like on eBay or something But I still got to collect everything else. I have to get the Lone Wanderer mail I have to get the feral ghoul. I have to get the super mutant and the death claw and these are really hard to find the death claw the Brotherhood of Steel and Volt Boy and like Volt Boy Go in the Dark are the most rarest ones to find. Those are really hard to come by. The Veral Ghoul, female, male, and the Super Mutant are kind of common to find. You just gotta keep your eye out. Uh, so the last pop toy I got, this is the Brotherhood of Steel pop toy, number 49 out of the collection. I only paid $10 for him. He is really, really heavy. I do have some bottle cap replicas from the game. We have like Nuka Cola right there. We have Vault Boy, we have Sunset Sarsaparilla. Yeah, there's a lot of bottle caps I picked up. I also got this one as well. This is from Fallout 4, uh, let me get rid of the glare. I paid $10 for this because I didn't pick it up at PAX Prime. I had to buy it when I got home because I totally forgot to pick this up at the Bethesda booth. Thank you guys so much for watching my Fallout 3 in New Vegas Flash Edition. I have to clean up right now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cleaning up to do. I'll see you guys later, have a wonderful day, and uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be doing some Fallout streams later. I'll be doing some uh, New Vegas mods and probably uh, going on YouTube gaming and live streaming New Vegas when I get a chance. I was going to clean this up right now. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Bye! You shall obey me because I am Fallout Boy and I want your money. Wow.
Fear me.